Welcome back to part two of my wooden electromechanical clock. Let's get on with it. Oh God. Now last week I was trying to sort out the crank arm for driving the mini wheel. And it got a bit tricky so I tried to simplify it quite a bit. Now I had the pivot points for both the servo arm and the mini wheel on the same axis. And that works for the top part of the crank, or the top part of the um, movement of the minute wheel, but the bottom half it becomes irregular. So this, move, this range of movement is a lot different. So I'm going to move that on the same axis instead. It should be there, yes. Let's put it in the right hole. There we go, right. That's lined up properly, that's lined up properly. When this is down, that's still lined up. So. This range of movement produces the same um, angles on this arm as this range of movement. So let's simplify my work. I mean, I've got one crank arm and I've got one half of the circle, so I just have to worry about those angles, and that's it. That should simplify the maths quite a bit. All I've got to do is invert the values for this half of the circle to get these angles. And then I've got the whole circle, and then all of that just rotate 90 degrees out of phase to get the crank arm for the other direction. So that's that sorted. I still need to do the maths, but that's made it a lot easier. What I might end up doing is measuring the angles of both of these, and then just making a lookup table. So for any set of values that the minute hand has to be, I look at the value on the, in the lookup table, and I'd say, okay, the server has to move. To this point or this point or over here or whatever and again a separate lookup table for this servo down here so the two angles match up bit fiddly but there you go onwards we interrupt our normal schedule to bring you impromptu mailbag from this guy da 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 Seymour make better just in time for winter. Thank you, Andy Berkey. I'll still wear this for the duration of the season. I'll put a link to Andy's channel down in the doobly-doo. Right, where were we? Ah, uh, I have a nice warm head and ears. This is perfect. Where's the, here we go, look. Right. Fits nice. Hey, hey. But wait, there's more. I forgot I bought a sticker as well as a hat and that fell out of the envelope as I was opening everything <laughs> addresses and everything else, paperwork and all that I've got an extra sticker for free and a is that hand, is that, that's branded or something that's, that's pretty good, that's amazing wood and it's got a magnet on the back so it's a fridge magnet that's amazing so sticker and Wooden fridge magnet for free. I'm feeling the love, Andy Berkey. I'm feeling the love. Thank you very much. That is amazing. Big, big props to you, man. With that very welcome distraction aside, all we up to? Right, last week I showed you these gears. Printed them out full size. I've got the gear diameter. I've got the contact path in red. You can probably just barely see that. I mean, I can barely see that. And I'm right here. And they're meshed together. I've got mesh points there for the idler gear and the gear that holds the hands. That works nicely. With that, I've, I've drawn up this, which is again a full sized layout. I've got the great gear, I've got all these gears here, I've got the support parts for holding everything together. I've got the outside diameter of each gear and the contact path of each gear, making sure they all mesh correctly and they join up really nicely. So I've got exactly how far apart they need to be. I've got the Geneva gear here and the Geneva drive here. Also a support part here. So I've got dimensions for making parts, the support parts particularly. With that in mind, I've drawn up the support pieces here. So we've got the main support arm which goes underneath the idler gear and the gear for the hands. And you've got the front support which goes above the idler gear and this part here supports the gear
gear with the hands on it. This one is it's funny, this one is for the Geneva gear to the Geneva drive and the Geneva gear. And you've got the top top parts for the Geneva drive itself. Ugh. Finally, I've drawn up some gears. Da, 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 da. Now I've got the clutch pinion, which goes the other side of the clutch that the great gear goes onto. That means I can adjust the hands without, without having to turn any of this. So that's handy. And all the others are just regular pinions for connecting the Geneva gear to this great gear. I've got the idler gear which meshes with the clutch pinion and that will go here. On top of that will be another pinion which engages with the hour hand gear which goes on top of there. So that all builds up in layers. I need to cut some of these out of wood and I've not done it yet. I don't know if I'll do that for this video or if I'll, I'll leave it. I've got a, a woodworking um, group I attend on Tuesdays and that'll be tomorrow filming this. So I may take some of these in tomorrow and use their scroll saw to buzz out a lot of these, if not all of these, which would be a lot, lot easier than using a jeweler saw. I could use a jeweler saw for this, but it will take the rest of the week because these are lots of little fiddly bits and I've got to make sure these mesh correctly and every teeth engages properly on every gear. So that'll be fun. But yeah, I've got, I mean, these are all the parts I need to cut out. I mean, I might cut some out today I and mean, I'll probably cut out some supports and this and then see how I go. But that's that for now. Okay, I'm gonna cut out the Geneva Drive, the Geneva gear, the Geneva Drive hub, as I'm calling it, and the support for that. And I'm going to turn up those parts for now and see how they mesh up properly. I need to find some sort of um, pillar to mount in there, some sort of peg or pin, something. I'm sure I've got something to go in this slot as it goes around and it goes with that slot and pull this around. So that's going to be fun. All right, glue stick, scissors, and plywood. Let's gather those things and I'll meet you back here. Sweet.
agree if that is just about big enough, that bit of wood. <gasps> oh, <well. Hold up to the light, I can see the wood behind the paper. So I can see if that black line, the outline for the shape is over that or not. And if it is, I know that the wood isn't big enough. But so far all the wood sits outside of the area described by that shape. Right, so that's good. Last one. This is a fiddly one, because it is pretty much dead on the right side as it needs to be. Good grief, yep. some bits out. I'm doing this inside because it's, it's dark out now, it's wet and miserable anyway. There's not a lot of light in here so I've had to crank the ISO all the way up to 3200 so I expect some grain in this but we'll see how that goes. Okay, after that stint with the jeweler's saw, this is what I have. I've got the Geneva Drive cut out. I've glued that down. Very fiddly just trying to lighten it because the rotation of this matters with respect to this peg. I think I've got it right, but I'll probably need to fine tune it anyway because it's, it's pretty tight tolerances. I've glued it on there. I've not cut this out yet, but that'll be the next job, but that'll be next week. And I've got a cardboard one and I mean these are tight because they're only roughly cut but it works just like that really you go like that that pin engages with that slot and indexes the next see if I do this properly like that sweet 
there's a spacer for that, so that'll be uh, that way around. No, it won't. This way around. And I'll go under there like that. Look at that, actually. Look. Spot on. Spot on. I mean, there's a hole. I've pre drilled all the holes, so if I've sanded in any of the surfaces smooth, I've still got the hole there to mark it. That's spotty dog. Look at that. So next week I'll be cutting that out, I'll be cutting the pinion out, um, some of the other gears, so we'll go for that and we'll try and get things actually moving, so by next week we'll have this moving on its thing, oh dear I've got glue everywhere, this is horrible, it's all on the bottom of this, I've glued that in place with epoxy, and it'll um, set up overnight, I might grind the back of that off, I'm not sure yet because I'm going to have spaces to lift this up, off the surface of the, the all the mounts and everything else. So, that's that, that's that. That's it for this week. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. But definitely tune in next week, we'll have lots more done. I'll spend a lot more time making stuff and videoing it and actually getting things built because we're at that stage now. It's going to be pretty good. It'll be pretty cool. So, tune in and I'll see you then. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Don't forget to tune in next week. We'll carry on with these projects. Thank you very much for watching if you've watched so far. It's going to be great, so do check back and see what we're doing. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share it. Share on social media, show your parents, show your friends, show your dog. Just get everyone involved, because it's going to be quite interesting. And I think people will want to see it. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. I can't get up.